Testing, testing. Are we are we good, Eric? Sorry about that, guys. Welcome to the Dark of the Night. I'm Alex Myers. I'm Eric Yearwood. So, um, we're very excited to be here on Twitch. Um, can you guys hear us now? Let us know if you can hear something. All right. Okay, Sorry about business. that. There are forces at work that want to prevent you from knowing the truth. Again, I'm Eric Yearwood. I'm Alex Myers. And one of those forces at work, we'll just clear the air, is the fact that their director is in Japan for three weeks. And if that's not in bad taste, I don't know what is. Eric, uh, ha, ha, well, first of all, hey, how's everyone doing out there tonight? Uh, we're, we're glad to be here on Twitch, on our first official live Twitch broadcast. Yes, um, we're really encouraged and enthused by the response that we've been getting from you, our loyal night crawlers. And um, many of you have talked about some paranormal experiences that you've had recently. So we're really excited to open the phone lines soon and, and hear from you. So we have a couple points of order before we get into our topic, hauntings. Um, and I will say this, we have um, one of our night crawlers, Krusty Suck, who went out to a forest with a gun and a camera to see if he could uh, find out some more about a bunch of black blobs he, sound, he saw hiding behind a tree. And um, We're also going to um, talk a little bit about Dr. Watney's discovery and suggestion that Spider-Man is not an urban character, but is in fact living in the Pacific Northwest. So, um, do we, how do, how do we want to, first of all, I think that it's, a, it's sort of an outsider theory, right, Eric, that, that there's a real Spider-Man, that there's an actual Spider-Man, right? And it's not the Spider-Man from the movies. And it sounds silly to some people. But there is a Spider-Man, and he lives in the Pacific Northwest. Well, it's very easy to d dismiss something that sounds sort of preposterous. But once upon a time, flight was preposterous. Right. People didn't believe that the Wright brothers had actually built and flown their own airplane. That turned out to be true. So this topic, I just feel like, deserves the same amount of respect. That's exactly the kind of... If people are okay with medicine, right, and science then why can't they be okay with there being a real Spider-Man in a forest just climbing up a tree? That's the real question. Let's I mean, pull, should we pull up the chart? It's sort of an interesting chart that Dr. Watney uh, drew up for us. And we'll be getting into our topic, hauntings, uh, in short order, but we, we thought this was an interesting piece of work. And, and Dr. Watney, uh, just to, to shout out and sound off, um, th this is your... Uh, chart is that that is correct? Right? Yes, it was made by Doctor Wat Doctor Watney. Watney. Okay, folks, we're gonna go to the chart. Go to the chart. Okay. The cool thing about the chart is that I can see it, but you can't. And in a lot of ways, there it is. So we've got um, new. We've got a couple of different categories here. Two categories: New York, New York Spider Man. That's, um, so Dr. Watney in the chat is saying, yes, I created this. It took some quite time. Full minutes. Dr. Watney, where did you get this data? Because we didn't actually ask you that. I suppose we, that should have been, we should, should be some vetting process. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Watney, if you could share with us in chat where you kind of got some of this data and we can share with you. Uh, let's read off some of the things. So the comparison on the New York side being that Spider-Man slings webs from hands by making metal horns. Yeah. And he's probably Tobey Maguire. Jury's out on him. Now, jury's out on him. I think that's an interesting comment because it's basically saying, well, Tobey Maguire has sort of had his moment, but now no one is sure if he was actually a good actor or not, if he was, he was just kind of charming. Well, um, this may be a controversial opinion. I really liked that part in the last Spider-Man that he was in where he put on his black clothes and he went to the club and he started to dance in a funny way. Um, I just thought that that was an excellent kind of Sam Raimi moment. But um, right. I know that that wasn't the most popular 
but we're, but that's all the fictional Spider-Man. Okay, Doctor Watney found it. Yeah. So so do, so Doctor Watney found her information from the uh, public library. Here's here's what I'll say about. Let's just summarize what we see on the New York side, and we'll quickly move to the Pacific Northwest Spider-Man. New York, New York Spider-Man. Classic Spider-Man traits. He makes friends with the NYPD for sure. Probably eats donuts a lot. Really and, and here's what I'll say, Eric. He can because he works out a lot, right? The comic book Spider-Man can eat a shit ton, ton of junk food because he just has the calories to burn. Right. That doesn't fly when you get to the Pacific Northwest. Now, the Pacific Northwest is a part of the country and a part of the world, Alex. I mean... Your garb is inspired in part by um, Manifest Destiny and the westward push by settlers. And it's a, it's a country for hardy folk that aren't city slickers, that aren't people who sort of sit in their bedrooms all day. Right. And, and to be a Spider-Man in that sort of rough-hewn part of the world, you got to have... You got to be a little bit more a different body type. I feel like right, and that's why the first point on uh, Dr. Watney's uh, list for the Pacific Northwest is that uh, Pacific Northwest Spider-Man definitely smokes weed. Now we don't smoke weed. No, we don't know what it we don't know what it, it feels like. Um, but <clears throat> we also don't want to tell anybody else what they can and can't do how many people here in the chat and actually don't answer this because it's illegal smoke weed don't don't disregard that question but think about it think about that question um pacific northwest spider-man lots of tall trees to swing from but low crime concentration in these areas so essentially spider-man is sort of walking around or swinging through these trees and he doesn't have a whole lot to do except for maybe survive. He doesn't have a job. He, he basically, he, he has these sort of some of the superficial abilities of Spider-Man, but none of the things to do. Um, we just felt sort of a tremor, which was odd. Can I, can I, small tangent from Spider-Man, I saw the movie Tremors this weekend with Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward. What was that? Uh, th that's a great movie. It is a good movie. It's about big worms in the desert. Um, so let's just summarize. Let's get to the end of this Pacific Northwest Spider-Man. Sure. Uh, it's, the, it's just the as other um, points. He's, he's pre he'd pretty much just be seeing the sights in the trees while high. He's a bum. Let's just say it. He is a bum. He's a fucking bum. I don't like the sound of this guy at all. Red uniform is considered aggressive in this area. Would need better camouflage. Do hands stick to bark? Not Toby Maguire. Jerry's still out. And kind of just hangs out. So, if this version of Spider-Man is real, I'd say he's a shithead. And, and I've met people like Pacific Northwest Spider-Man. And they think they're really, really hot. They, they, they act like the world owes them a living, you know? I mean, the, you, you and I work really hard. People like Pacific Northwest Spider-Man think that they're going to find candy at the bottom of a Doritos bag, and that candy is going to have a million dollars inside of it. Or, uh, we're getting a call. Folks, we're going to go ahead and take our first call of the night. Let's, uh, let's answer it. Hello? Can you hear us? Hello? Are you hearing us? Hello? Ladies and gentlemen, our, direct, our director isn't here, so Hello? We are, we're, 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 we're beta testing our phone system tonight. And we apologize for that. But, but here's what Hello? I... Oh, hey, oh, we, oh we can hear you. Can uh -oh. Hey, what's up? Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you guys? I'm I'm great. How are you doing? This is the, yeah, you're I'm doing good. I, yeah, I really like the uh, the setup that you guys have. I like uh, the cactus in the background and all that stuff. Oh, it's thanks so much. Good. Thanks so much. Thanks. What, what's your name, if you, if you don't mind? Uh, this is Otis. 
you know, I'm calling up for you guys. Just want to say hi, see how you're doing. Otis, you sound like you're from um, New York, New Jersey. Is that maybe possible or? It could be possible. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to guess um, Long Island. Okay, you're, you're pretty close. Uh, you know, you're spot on there, maybe. I like spot on maybe. Well, look, we're two guys who are in an undisclosed location, and so we, we certainly understand anonymity. Wait a second. You guys are, you guys are, you guys are uh, in an undisclosed location? We're in an undisclosed location. I'll be it right back. Like I just have to Mexico. check something in the bathroom. Well, to me, it kind of, no, to me, it looks like you guys are in New Mexico, if I was to guess. Well, we do have a desert background. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, that's Stonehenge. Oh, you guys are in England. Okay, I got it. Well. I got it now. Well, I want to be completely transparent with everybody who's watching. Um, we're not actually in England. Um, this is a, we've got a, a sort of a, CG background and um, and so well, you guys gotta say that maybe put up like a little banner or say something like that because you know you don't want people getting confused no you know, thinking that you're somewhere that you're not you know what I mean no look uh, I hear that um, and 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 furthermore I'm assuming that the accent that I hear is not something that you're putting on just so people will think that you're from somewhere that you're actually not. Yeah, that, is, that would be true. I couldn't, you know, people usually tell where I'm from. Um, in, yeah, people usually know, so what are you going to do? Otis, you said that you're sort of pretty, a, a pretty intense guy. Um, yeah, well, you know, I get crazy sometimes. I start losing my mind. The weed whacker's going in the background. You can't, you know, can't always control things like that. It might get a little wacky, you know. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like, you got to understand what's going on sometimes. Look, that's a motto we all live by. One, yeah, of, so, one, of, the rules of, one of the rules of Dark of the Night, Otis, that we try to follow, and, and, and it's actually kind of a, it's a simple sentence, and I think it has a deep meaning. you got to try to know what's going on sometimes. And, and that's what we try to do on this show, is we try to know what's going on sometimes with ghosts and aliens and UFOs. Actually, something that, that happened at my house, actually, uh, where I'm from, is actually um, a UFO capital. And, uh, you know, we went into the backyard and took a couple friends out there one night. We went looking for Bigfoot because, you know, we wanted to see if it was real or not. So we were walking around in the woods and whatnot, all of us. We brought a camera. We walked around, we looked for Bigfoot. We didn't see him, we didn't hear him, but then we heard the calls. And if you've ever heard a Bigfoot call, you'll know right right then there when you hear the call, you say, oh crap, that's gotta be a Bigfoot. Cause as soon as you hear that sound, it's sort of like a kind of sound. And that's when you know that it's coming for you. So that's, that's really what we were doing in the woods, but we never saw it, we heard it. And that's, you know, you see what I'm saying? Oh, where I'm from, you can just go out and kind of do that kind of thing. And I don't know if you guys have ever just gone out into the woods late at night and looked around. Because that's what we did. And we had the tents. We brought some, you know, weapons and stuff to protect ourselves. Because you don't know what these Bigfoots are going to try and do. I wouldn't want to shoot the Bigfoot. But if the Bigfoot got shot, I mean, I would feel bad about that. So that's why. But again, I, I don't want to die. So you guys understand that probably uh, better than anybody. Well, if it's you or them, right? No matter how much you respect uh, these paranormal creatures, um, uh, no matter how rare or beautiful they are, you have to kill them if, they're, if they seem dangerous, even a little. You have to kill them now. Well, that's totally true, Alex. Um, and Otis, I might mention the fact that, and this is something that Alex and I have discussed on many a night when we've been camped out in uh, the woods waiting to hear the call that you just described, you have to think to yourself, boy, if I put a couple bullets in the right places, then this thing's going to drop, and once I drag it back to town, I'm set for life. I mean, is the financial, the, is, the, is that at all a piece of things going through your mind? Well, you got also, you got to also think that you don't want Dick Cheney, your friend, because you, you, a lot of times when we go out to look for Bigfoot, I don't know about you guys, when you guys go out and Bigfoot hunt, 
what we do is we actually make the calls ourselves to try and attack the creature. I mean, not attack, but bring the creature in. So you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, hear the call and then just start firing blindly off into the woods because you're gonna end up shooting your freaking friend in the face. That's I mean, right. You could dress him up, put some shoes on him, and bring him into town and see what you can get for it. But I don't think you're gonna be set for life. But then, you know, from shooting your buddy. Well, we're getting into the we're getting into sort of the the gritty nitty gritty logistical details of killing Bigfoot in the middle of the night when you're with a group of friends. So people romanticize these things. They say, "Well, I'm just gonna grab the gun that I have." Um, in my living room, uh, and I'm just going to walk, right. and I'm going to walk out to the forest, and I'll start shooting, and then I'll have a Bigfoot. Well, you know, it's not that easy because your friends are usually in front of you. Right. It, it, I think. Uh, no. Yeah, you, I completely agree. I completely agree. Well, that's and, why. You know, so I don't yeah. mean to cut you off. Go ahead, please. Go no, ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. go I was just going to say. I I'm was. Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. We, Alex and I, we have weekly drills, and we run, and we have hand signals that pre we practiced. So, w uh, case in point, Alex, when I do this, what does that mean? There's, uh, there's a fire outside, and I have to go call the police. Okay. When I do this, what does that mean? Uh, there's someone hiding behind a wall up ahead. And then? Uh, you, you're being haunted. So th these are, you have to have to have almost like a SEAL Team 6 sort of mentality when you're looking for these creatures. Otherwise, it's guaranteed you're going to shoot someone you know and love. This is not something to just play around with. Eh? Sounds like you're on the same page, Otis. Otis? Okay. We lost Otis. I think that was, a, that was an interesting call, though, because I think it kind of shows. Now... Before we dig into our topic of, of hauntings, we can kind of wrap up our points of order by saying one of the things that people, inexperienced people, don't think about as, you know, when they're just getting into the paranormal is that it's, it's, logist, it's a logistical task. So let's, you know, for instance, let's say you're going to inspect a haunted house right. and you forgot to pack lunch and dinner and then you forgot to bring clothes to, to change into the next day, and you also don't have a sleeping bag or a pillow, Right. you are completely fucked. Because you're not a ghost. <laughs> Unlike ghosts who can just live with the clothes that they die in and they don't have to eat, well, you, we need sustenance. So you've got you to think about these things ahead of time. And Alex and I, you know, people ask us, why are you guys spending so much time working on this bullshit? That's, in fact, what my uncle said to me that very thing when I ran into him at the supermarket the other day. And duh, you can't just walk out into the woods and expect to kill a Bigfoot. You have to practice. Yeah, Eric's uncle is a son of a bitch, and he does not understand that being a paranormal investigator is logistic and you need to appear to be wasting most of your life in order to prepare for it. He does not like Alex and he keeps telling me, what are you spending all this time with this guy in a cowboy hat? It seems a little weird. You know, I'm done talking about that guy on my show. Yeah. It's our show, but... Yeah. Um, and one only general says what can i practice on that's similar to a bigfoot <clears throat> well that's a perfect segue into our subject matter tonight the one um because we're talking tonight about hauntings and hauntings is hauntings uh, big you know there's only one kind of bigfoot an angry one but hauntings there's all sorts of ghosts and so you can sort of practice Little by little. Otis has an interesting suggestion. Um, he said he got his call got dropped before. He practices on cows. What I would say about that is, is well, do, you know, if you don't own the cows, it, it may be, and I don't have any judgments on this, but it may be unethical to be pra practicing, you know, murdering Sasquatch on a ca on cows. Um, but I'm not sure. I don't, 
if the, if the cows belong to you, I've heard of places in outside of Bangkok where you can actually rent an RPG, a Vietnam era RPG, and shoot it at a cow and just watch it explode. My, someone I know went on a motorcycle trip out there and did that. So if you, if they belong to you, well then have at it, but, um, but I wouldn't do that to anybody else's cow. Hauntings, our topic of the evening. Where the phone lines are open, we're open to hearing your paranormal experiences, your theories on hauntings. Eric, hauntings. I'm going to ask a dumb sounding question, but it's actually kind of a profound question. Hauntings, good or bad? good there you go what do, what do you think good they're good here's we, why should we say why should, let's go let's well that's part of what's exciting about what we're about where we're going next hauntings are good because they're proof of something beyond this mortal coil. You see, <clears throat> Otis just mentioned, you know, you're going to blow one of your friends away if you go out there and you start shooting guns at Bigfoot willy-nilly. And that's true. And when you find yourself in that unfortunate position where a bullet and let's just say, just for the sake of argument, that it's a cop killer bullet, a hollow point. Yeah. And let's and they're designed to blow the meat uh, inside the wound just outward. Right. So let's just say you're walking in the woods and you're drinking with your friends, and all of a sudden, the meat right here just blows wide open. You're not going to have time to sort of pack your bags and say sayonara to everybody. You've got to do that. If you want to, like, kind of say goodbye, you got to do that as a ghost. Right. You need more time than the mortal realm would provide for you because you got killed by a very horrible, illegal uh, bullet, and it was your friend who did it. So... So, so, so therefore, hauntings, that's a good thing. Like, if you can come yeah. back and hang out and accomplish a few things. What would you say? If, if I'll, I'll ask you this. If, I, if it was me, if I, you know, I thought, and you know I would never do this, and that's why I feel comfortable asking you, but if I was really excited out in the woods and I just sort of shot you, and I thought it was um, Bigfoot. What would you say after me? What would you say afterwards as a ghost to me? Goodbye? I'm only, this is where all theoretical. Right. So anything, I don't take what I'm about to say personally. Right. Uh, my first response would probably be, I would say I would visit you in the middle of the night right. and I would, you know, after you change clothes and work in bed and I would say, are you sure that you didn't do this intentionally? That would probably be the, what I would want security knowing that you didn't do that intentionally. Yeah. I, and the answer is no, I didn't. Um, it was a mistake. And then... And, and, and the fact that I was sleeping so well that I went home and just went to bed, um, that's just because I was tired. I was still... I was racked with guilt. I was destroyed. But I still had to go to bed. Well, I would just watch you sleep probably for a few days just, just to make absolutely sure... Um, that you truly didn't do anything untoward. 
Dr. Watney, so she's sensing some bo- bonding happening. And, um, and that's good, because any... Some people may... Eric and I are the deepest of friends. And we're such deep friends that if I killed Eric... Um, we could work it out. We'd work it out afterwards. Now, if, if we were in a, a sort of a, the inverse situation, let's say we were at Loch Ness, and for whatever reason we were in a boat, and you ended up sort of trapped under the boat, um, and you drown. How did I get under the boat? I mean, there's a million ways right. that that could happen. Let's just say... Um, I was doing some work down there. Yeah, you were doing some work down there, and um, let's say that everything that you know, like knowing how to swim, it no longer was, that knowledge base was not available to you anymore. Right. And you were pin- you were being pinned. I... I think if this was happening to me, I'd be thinking what's, what I'm thinking right now, which is what the fuck is happening right now. I'd be, because there's so many things going wrong for me. While I was under the boat, I was down there. I shouldn't have been down there. And then I forgot how to swim. And then I somehow got kind of nailed to the bottom of the boat. It's almost, it's almost like a, it's almost like a Three Stooges scene, but I'm, but I'm dying. Right. What, how, what is, what does this have to do with Loch Ness Monster? And, and I totally believe it does have something to do with it, but I'm, I'm, I'm just a little. The Loch Ness Monster was incidental. That's just an investigation in this theoretical situation. Right. The point is. After you were dead, what would you come back and say? I think what I would say is, what, what, what the hell happened? Why was I down there? And how did I forget how to swim? And the reason I would say that is, is that... I would hope that you had the answer because I couldn't, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. And then I'd say, I love you. That's really nice. Um, hey, the one and only general says hello. Folks, we want to mention, by the way, that this is an interactive show. You, the night crawlers, are our army of truth seekers scouring the globe for bits of information that will lead us all to the truth and we want to both have you call in and talk to us on the phone line we also would like if you have any pertinent links on the internet any videos any images that you want want us to look at post them here in the chat we'll pull them up and alex and i will use our years, decades of paranormal investigation experience to decode what we're seeing and then we'll diagnose them together. So, <clears throat> hauntings, right? Or hauntings. Hounting. The, the, the German, German word haunt. And from the German worm, worm geist. The wor- uh, Polter. Polter. Which means... He who laughs, geist, he, being. ghost, he who laughs, ghost. In court, and if you break it down further, ge, iced, ge, incorporeal, iced, floating, floating essence. Tauntings are an opportunity, a second chance for us to go to either a loved one or a stranger and, you know, shut, shut a bunch of doors, kind of throw a bunch of windows open, make rooms cold. And that's a ghost's way of saying, hey, guess who's here? It's me. 
a ghost. <clears throat> you know, there are books I've read that have said that the best ghosts, the most active ghosts, are ones who prepare now for what kind of tricks they're going to play on mortals once they die. That is that is so, and again, this is roots back to our idea that, and, and our belief that the paranormal is a logistical enterprise. And so, you know, there are ghosts who aren't good at being ghosts. Right. Because they put no fucking thought into what they would do. I think that's why you have so many ghosts doing the same stupid shit. Yeah. Like, uh, here's a door. Maybe I'll shut it uh, and open it. Like, great. That's a bullshit thing to do. There's so many things you can do as a ghost. You know, <clears throat> what we need is a scientific study that determines what the abilities are what where what parameters does a ghost have within which to operate because you know let's put it this way if they have if they can only open and shut like a kitchen cupboard and throw cutlery all over the room well then maybe they're doing the best that they can do but if look uh, a, a ghost can do all sorts of stuff if they can pull a little girl into a tv set if they can change the sky from day to night if they can create columns of flame that shoot thousands of feet into the air well then they're kind of they need to step it up a little bit night crawlers what would you do if you had to haunt someone I'll tell you I'll tell you what I would do Oh, this is this is a, actually a great question. The one and only general asked, "Have you ever tried a Ouija board?" We have, just a few weeks ago. We have one here. We do. Um, that makes me. I, I. We don't quite have the camera angle to show us using the Ouija board, but uh, maybe that's something for next week. Um, but we had a very unsettling experience with a Ouija board where we were trying to call for, forth a spirit and we said, spirit, are you here? And we weren't moving it. No. Yeah. We, we, we moved the, the Ouija board. We said, are you spirit, are you here? And it said, no. And we turned to each other and we were like, what does that mean? And then we kind of called it quits for the night. Nightcrawlers, I know some of you out there are sitting on some stories. Maybe you woke up in the middle of the night and there was a figure standing over your bed. Maybe that figure pushed you down and pinned you down and you couldn't talk or speak. Here we go. We have a call, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just stand by for a moment. Hello, you're on Dark of the Night. Who's calling? Hey there, Watney. Thanks for calling in. How you doing? I'm good. Watney, we you, Eric and Alex. <laughs> That's right. Uh, thank you for being um, so helpful this week in sharing some of your experiences, some of your thoughts. We uh, we appreciate that. Oh, it's no problem. We're all in this together. So. Wa Watney, remind me what part of the country you hail from. Am it California? Is that correct? Oh, no, I hail from the Midwest. The Midwest. Uh, that's actually, that's wonderful. Uh, Alex and I, we love the Midwest. We wish we were there, actually. We don't, we're not huge fans of New York City. Um, oh, it's too crowded? It's too crowded and just people don't, uh, they don't have open minds here about the things that we're interested in. The You find people like uh, Otis, who called in earlier, kind of, you know, uh, on the margins who are open-minded. But um, a lot of people are, I, I'd say, um, I'm trying to be polite because these are my neighbors. They're, mm -hmm. stu they're stupid, dumb assholes who live in big buildings and wear suits. And that's the nicest thing I could think of to say. 
just to sort of give you some idea. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you, uh, Watney, what, mm-hmm. what is your opinion of uh, the people that are near you in your sphere of influence in the Midwest? Do you find them amenable to your ideas about life and about at the afterlife and the great beyond? Well, uh, I live in, like, the Bible Belt. Sure. So it's it's like one extreme or the other here. Mm. Oh. But I do, as far as my immediate sphere, I live in a duplex. So That's my great. neighbors are okay. So... So speaking of the duplex, that's the reason I was calling in. Great. I have a story. Please. Please tell us. Okay. So this occurred June 2014. So my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, and I had decided to move in together after a year of being together. And I got the keys to the house and moved in a few days early. And he left his cat, Akito, here with me. And he wasn't here. He was still living at his old place before he moved all of his stuff in. And I was alone in the house. This is my third night alone. And I'm laying in bed and reading. And I'm a stomach sleeper, so I was laying on my tummy. Sure. And uh I feel a keto hop up on the bed and he lays on my feet. And he had formed a habit the last few days of this because he's lonely when my husband isn't around. And so I didn't think anything of it until I heard a keto meow downstairs. Hmm. I'm not liking where this is going. Yeah, it was really scary. So I can't believe I didn't even turn to look when he jumped up but I turned around and nothing was there but I still felt that weight on my feet and I pulled my knees to my chest and I just I called my husband and we talked for a while as I calmed down but anyway I think I think this place is haunted but you know it only happened one time Hmm. See, that's the sort of thing that completely you know, when people talk about miracles, this is one of the things I learned when I went to college. People talk about miracles like, oh, it's a miracle. It'd be wonderful. It'd be so want- beautiful to see a miracle. It would destroy your universe to see a miracle. And in the mm-hmm. same way, because, because all of a sudden your reality would just fall apart. And in the same way, if you thought your cat was on your feet and then suddenly you heard it meow downstairs you'd say my reality is over now right and so how long and until after this event did you and your husband separate (laughs) we were we're still together (laughs) oh you mean how long were we separated after i'm sorry no i made i made a set a few assumptions my as Alex said, I would think that something like this would be, would sort of disintegrate your ability to relate to relate. anyone to, and the everyone. Human. And so yeah. I, I, I sort of made the, the assumption that you and your husband decided to part ways after that so that you could pursue. No, I mean, we still live in the house. We just don't talk. So. Well, that's... Um In fact, you're the first, first, like, human contact, human voice I've heard since then. What? What? What am I he- What am I hearing right now? What is all right, Doctor Watney? We don't usually, when we hear that a night crawler is in trouble. Um, we're, du- we, we're duty bound to help. Yeah, and we, we, we have to ask, we have, we, this has happened before where we 
something comes out on the phone that is alarming and we have kind of a set three questions that we ask and if you answer okay we know that we don't have to come come to, out there. come out there so we're going to ask you these questions to make sure you're all right okay and just I'm all right just to be clear well mm-hmm. you got to answer the questions you're gonna you're gonna answer the question. Yeah. Otherwise, we are gonna get in a car right now and we're gonna start heading. Yeah, we signed a contract to each other a while ago that that's what we would do. And I have one of those fobs that you can remote start your car, so my the car is already running. So we're gonna ask you three questions, and if it sounds like you're being prompted in any way. <laughs> to know. Uh, question one. Uh, okay. Are you eating three square meals a day that at least 70% of the time make r- reference to the major food groups, the healthy ones? Can you repeat that? Sure. It's written right down in front of me. Are you eating three square meals Am a day? Am I eating? Oh, what? There's more. Am I eating? Wait, can you hear me? Watney? Can you hear us? Yeah. This is yeah, going well. Yeah, I can. This is going well. Here's the question. If you ask if I'm eating, I'm chewing gum. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go past this question. We're gonna it's, it's question. set because it sounds like you're all right with this question. Let's go to question two. Question two. Okay. Can you do twenty push-ups in under fifteen seconds? No. Good. If you answered yes, you would definitely be possessed. Mm. Question three. Oh, thank God. <clears throat> if you had to choose your favorite Matrix film. Matrix. My favorite what? Your favorite Matrix film from the Matrix trilogy. Which one? Um, I thought it was just, they just made one movie. That's, a, that's the right answer. We don't consider movie two and three to be canon, so. Yeah. We're glad you well, see it the same way. I have similar thoughts about the Alien franchise, mm. but just the one and two are canon. But anyway, that's well, besides the point. Am d- I okay? You're okay. You're, You're okay, okay, Dr. Wani. You, 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 you passed. Let me turn uh, turn my car off. Um, look, we look out we look out for each other here on Dark of the Night. And <laughs> Watney, if we knew that you were in any kind of trouble, whether it was from a poltergeist, Mothman, Shadow People, any of the characters from the Star Wars cinematic universe, um, not the fictional ones, but the real ones, we would do whatever it took to help you to rescue you and to make sure that you are on your own path to enlightenment. Well, I really appreciate that. And honestly, just watching your show helps a lot. Well, that means a lot to us. Um, Stay vigilant. uh, And uh, I I do, just to loop back before we let you go, about Mm-hmm. About the cat. Yeah. Get, get rid of the cat. The cat has has to be eliminated. Um, it's the only way to play it safe because those two events are connected, and if the cat has somehow been taken over by any sort of a geist, polter or mm. poultice, contrail geist, corpo geist. You've got to make sure that the host is 
destroyed. I'll see what I can do. Perfect. Great. Dr. Watney, thank you for calling in. Um, here's what I want to say. I think Dr. Watney's call brought up something interesting, which is that there are some kinds of hauntings which are not good. As much as we've been trying to focus on the positive, which is that it gives you an extension of life to communicate with human beings after your mortal life, there are certain things in which it, 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 it's, it's the destruction of your, your, your life as you know it. It's the destruction of your life as you know it, but <laughs> boy, it's got to be fun. Uh, I don't. To I be don't fully. F I don't fully follow. Well, what I mean by that is uh, to be on the other side, to be able to float about, and no one can see you, but you can see exactly what they're doing. Right. Oh no, it's fun to be the ghost. Right. I think we're, we've been very generous in trying to see things from the ghost point of view. Let's, let's talk about, you know, I... As uh, a person who tries to be compassionate towards, you know, I, of, of course, my guide and like, oop, unknown person, we're getting a call in. Okay, let's take the All call. Right, let's take the call. Hello, you're on the line with Dark of the Night. Who's calling? Yeah, uh, hey, it's Cordell. Great, Cordell. Hey, Cordell, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you folks doing tonight? I'm doing great. Uh, Cordell, um, where are you calling from? Uh, Atlanta. You familiar with Atlanta? Uh, I hear great things about Atlanta. I hear it's a great town. I hear that there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of um, ghost activity down there, from what I understand. Well, it's more so nigger activity. Whoa. Well, uh, we've got to. Yeah, we got to. Folks, we can't. We can't. I, I've heard of people calling in, into places and saying that word. Yeah. But I've never heard someone call in and say that word. And here's what we'll do if you call in and say that word. We're going to take our heads, and we're going to shove them up your ass. And then we're going to take your head and shove them up our ass. Because that word is, is unacceptable. It's, it's unacceptable, and it's unreasonable. Here's the reason why. We're all in this together. Alex and I have devoted our our lives, our adult lives, lives that could have been spent in a lot of other ways. I almost wanted to say that we, the, we've dedicated the past thousand years, but that doesn't, well, that's it's, not true. It seems like that. And when you've worked this hard in order to bring people together, in order to save all races, all peoples from what could be a doomsday whirlwind of hellish cryptids, just coming over the horizon and destroying everything we hold dear, then you can't allow any sort of negativity that would divide all of us. Look, look, li listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who would try to try to divide humanity, we are we. It's exactly what Eric said. We're all in this together. And if you think when that final war comes, and it's all supernatural and paranormal entities, it's aliens. It's Predator. It's, it's you got Yoda. You all vampires, all werewolves, teaming up. All the bad things from Harry Potter, but the real versions of it, not the bullshit Harry Potter sort of cute. Oh, it's a CG cartoon. No, it's like it's actual, actual Voldemort. The real Hagrid. You tell me when that final moment comes and the battle lines are drawn that you aren't brothers in arms and sisters and people in arms 
with your fellow humanity because we all need to work together to kill Hagrid. He's the one who must be destroyed first because he's, um, he's, he's not right. Folks, um, we've got uh, some footage that was captured and sent to the Daily Mail that we want to take a look at. So I'm going to pull this up here, and maybe, Nightcrawlers, you can tell us what you think about this footage. This is a woman sleeping in her bedroom, and we're going to take a look at it. Alex, are you noticing anything odd here? It looks like a, It looks like a still. I think that that's just because the computer... Oh, hold on. You know what? I'm sorry. I have to I have to back this up because I did something in that I was trying to blow the image up a little bit bigger. All right, let's let's try this again. Okay. Now keep your eyes peeled. Woman sleeping. Look at that, Alex. The door opens by itself. You can see pictures of her family on the wall outside. Look, the covers got pulled down. And she's wearing a bathing suit. Oh, she turned the light on. She's sort of rolling around. She's rolling around in a bathing suit in her bed. Okay, she's got to get out of there. The sun is exploding outside. I'm guessing that's what's happening. There's some sort of nuclear attack. <clears throat> well, she has a number of problems going on in this, in this footage. I would say that the, the door opening was probably the least of her problems. She... Here's a grown woman who's rolling around in bed in a bathing suit. Uh, while a nuclear attack is happening. You see, this is prior priorities, right? Right. Here's a haunting is just one of many things. Uh, do I believe in the paranormal, Eric? Absolutely, I do. But it's just one of many things in life. What's worse, being haunted or getting hit by a car? I'd say it's a toss-up. It is a toss-up. That was a bad example. But the fact that it's a toss-up it means, you know. It means it, that life ha holds so many different possibilities. There, it's all in the sphere of life. What's okay? What's worse, getting bitten by Dracula, or being in um, like being a hostage? Yeah, being a hostage. Being in that movie, or being in that movie, Hostel. Definitely being in the movie Hostel is worse than Dracula. Um, well, look, I, the point is, is that footage was <clears throat> evidence that, look, it, it, Alex and I do a lot of ghost hunts. And one of the things we learned early on is if there's a, some sort of a problem and you're in physical danger or you have some sort of mortal concern... You, you're not going to come back to the next ghost hunt if you don't take care of yourself first. And that woman was rolling around in a bathing suit. She probably should have had some sort of a long gown on or something when she went to bed. She didn't. And, and, we, and we don't judge, by the way, but there's just certain... We're very loose ethically, but we do think that there's certain clothes you wear to bed. There's certain clothes to wear you bed. Dr. Watney says she's rolling in the deep. I feel like we're sisters. You know that... There were some similarities there between what we just saw in the video and what Dr. Watney had to say to us. I don't, can you explain? Because I, I feel like I can't immediately put into words why Dr. Watney's story was believable and that seemed sort of, sort of. Well, she, well, okay, okay. The sim, it's the simplicity. Right. What Dr. Watney says it doesn't matter what you're wearing, you can be haunted. Absolutely true. Um, but what I would say is, is she sort of gilded the lily. What I'm saying, and, wh and what I mean by that is, if you post a video on YouTube that says nuclear blast goes off while ghost haunts man, 
I'm so afraid that who's calling is is the guy who said the N word before. I'm terrified. Look, okay, we'll, 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 t- we'll t- if if. Hello, you're on the line of Darker Than Night. Who's calling? That was better. That was better than the guy saying the N word. Would you agree? Yeah, I think that that that's a probably a better a better call. Is it a good call? It was so short that it wasn't it wasn't particularly offensive. I think if if a certain percentage of our calls are just people screaming, then I would be tempted to say that that those would be bad calls. We don't we try not to rate calls good or bad. Um so what I'm going to say is that call was was, you know, it was fine. It was fine. It was a fine call. Um I, I, everybody's made those kind of calls at some point in their life. Here's what I'd say. If that was the guy who said the N-word, did he just redeem himself? No. He's, but he's, you can tell he's sorry. You know what's weird? I'm, Alex and I have become really, really good judges of human character and human nature. It did seem like that was sort of his way of apologizing and say, look, I still want to be involved. I'm I don't want to say the N-word, and so I'm just going to say this. Yeah, and here's what we'd say. Are you forgiven? No. But do we appreciate in a way that when I go home, now we're, now we're getting into, now I'm afraid. Okay. Hello, you're on the line with Dark of the Night. Who's calling? Hello? Hello? Hello. Um, hey there, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? How are y'all doing tonight? We're doing great. Who, uh, uh, what's your name? Uh, my name? My name is Frank. Hey, Frank. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. And where are you guys streaming from, by the way? We're streaming from uh, an undisclosed location in Queens, New York, and it's right by the subway, which is a bonus. New York, you said? Queens, New York. What? Queens, New York. Queens, New York. Oh, you're in Queens. We're in oh, you're in Queens. Oh, that's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. I, I live in upstate New York. Uh, do you live in um, uh, Do you live in um, uh, Ocasio Cortez's congressional district? Uh, you know, we try and stay out of politics. We we don't we don't vote, but no, that's. I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to get a general location. I know the Queens area very well. I think I might know some of your friends. Okay. That's a... You know, and now this is... I'm not embarrassed to say this. I don't have what I would call conventional friends. Yeah, Alex and I are pretty much the closest things to friends that we have. And we do like each other, fine. Yeah, we, we, we are, we've agreed to, to get along great. Well, Frank, what, what, brings, you, what brings you to the, the dark of the night call, call in tonight? Mm, that's a good point right there, Michael, my boy. So, um, uh, do you live in the part of Queens where, um, uh, where, uh, do you live in the high crime area of Queens or do you live in a good area? Uh, we, we live in a transitional area. Um, oh, I see, I see. So just let me, let me kind of ask you a question. Were you just kind of sort of, you were just calling to kind of maybe talk about Queens, or was there anything? No, that- I was just going because I found, I found your live stream. I thought you, I, I liked your cowboy hat. I have my own cowboy hat myself. It's my profile picture on Steam. And I just wanted to call because you look pretty cool. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I bought this cowboy hat in the actual state of Texas. So if that doesn't show that I'm... Look, do I look cool? That's not for me to say. Am I doing the things you're supposed to do to look cool? I'd like to think so. We we both try pretty hard to. We're conscious of our appearance. Let's put it that okay. way. Okay. All right, that's good. You got to be like that down in Queens. Uh. 
Remind me your name again, Frank. Frank, do you have any kind of paranormal experiences that... Um... Mm, paranormal experiences. Um, all right. So, my, so some paranormal experiences. So my, my name is a little bit self-explanatory from some, for some historical events. Okay. So what happened this one time in Poland was I went down there. I went down to the, um, uh, the camp. This is already not. This is. I think we so have here, to just. Um, now this is what I would what I, what I would call what I would call the late night airwaves sometimes, and this is the it's exhilarating to know that there's so many perspectives. There's so many perspectives, and so many of them are racist. Yeah, it's um, it sort of changes your point of view when you sort of stand on the precipice of the unknown and you stare out into the future i think we're gonna i think we're gonna have to say uh good night to our our callers there but i i think we should say something about we should say something about our callers and bay frank is in the chat he's 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 alive he's alive through text you, you, there's different kinds of hauntings, Eric. Yeah. There's I think that Frank is on the <laughs> Frank may be on he may be <laughs> Well Well yeah. Yabis, yeah, yeah, we totally hear you. We totally hear you. We totally hear you. But here's, we're a little gun shy now. This is, this is live Concerned Caller. Concerned Caller, how's it going? Here's the thing, here's what I'll say. Are we being a little, are we being a little gun shy? Are we, are we, sh did we shut off that call a little soon? Can concentrated camps be haunted? Yeah, they can be haunted. Are we go are, are we a little scared to talk about concentration camps on our show? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we're a little, we're a little. We're, just, a, just a. I don't know how many people out there <clears throat> are aware of this, but here in New York City, concentration camps. It's not a popular topic. We have 20 viewers. Stop being pussies. Uh, I think it's time for the dark truth. Well, let's 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 confront let's confront this head on with the dark truth. Um, let's uh, let's go to the dark truth. All. Scared? Yeah. I guess in a lot of ways I am scared, Arthurius. I'm... I'm scared of... I'm less scared of ghosts than I am of people. Because you never know. You never know if someone is going to call from Atlanta and suddenly say the N-word. Now, are there some people out there who say, hey, you got to deal with it. You got to fight those people. Well, there's a reason that I'm involved in the <sighs> supernatural. And it's because... I like to go out alone into the woods with a flashlight where I know no one is and look for everything that isn't human. If that makes me a coward, then hey, I'm a coward. 
I'm a big coward. But I'll tell you this. Artheris, you are absolutely welcome to your view. You're absolutely welcome to your view. That I'm a pussy. I'm a great big pussy. And I think Dr. Watney has it right in that haunted concentration camps are uh, a hot topic that require their own episode. Are we going to do that episode? No. Ladies and gentlemen, it was an honor broadcasting for you tonight. Oh, Seinfeld Laugh Track is currently in the woods right now. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think we are, our hour is up. And although, when I say that the show sort of got twisted in a knot of sort of being afraid that someone was going to say something anti-Semitic on our call and kind of pushing out of having them call in, yeah, I'd say that that's what happened. Are we proud that that happened? Yeah. We're pretty proud of that. Folks, uh, we are uh, very happy. We are very stoked and happy uh, that that um, we had a great night tonight. Thank you for coming along the journey with us. I, I just want to point out Seinfeld Laugh Track is one of our night crawlers, one of our followers. And he earlier today mentioned that he was going to go into the woods with a gun in the dark and just hunt for creatures he was going to bring a camera and a gun into the woods and it sounds like he's out there now and so just before we sign off i wanted to give concerned caller the opportunity to tell us what you're seeing out there oh i'm sorry it's not concerned caller it's it's seinfeld laugh track crusty suck and he, he apologizes for coming on late. Seinfeld, before we sign off, can you give us an update? What are you seeing out there? Mountain Standard Time. Sure. That's so, fine. Well, Seinfeld, know, what did you see? Did you see any creatures? Did you see anything maybe that you weren't supposed to see? Should we take Yabas's call about the Iraqi demon goat or should we, should, we, should, we, should we save that for next time? Well, here's the thing about um, taking calls is... <laughs> You just never know what you're going to get. I think we're going to say we're going to we're going to kiss we're going to kiss the night goodnight. And we're going to say we're going to have to check in with we're going to have to check in with Krusty Suck offline. We're going uh, to it, Krusty Suck off. Uh, it was a pleasure broadcasting to you tonight. I'm, uh, we will be on next week again Wednesday at 10:30. Our hour is up. Uh, in well, this shit crusty. Yes, y Yabis, we'd love to take your call next week. We got a little gun shy because because um, well, we are our focus is on hunting the paranormal, and we don't want to say anything that might hurt anyone's feelings. The human race is already so di so divided. We all need to come together to tackle the paranormal. So with that, we leave you. This charge, Nightcrawlers, go out, seek the truth, hunt down the evil in the paranormal realm, and we'll see you next week.
Zippos. We'll see you next week, 10.30 p.m. on Wednesday.